Hi, my name is Dr. John Duyard, and I want to talk to you about a shocking report from the Environmental Workmen's Group on sunscreens. And they found out that there's very little research proving the effectiveness of sunscreens on most skin cancers. Now they did find that, that sunscreens protect us from squamous cell carcinoma, which is, about, which is responsible for about 16% of most cancers, but it's not that doesn't protect us against basal cell carcinoma, which is responsible for about 80% of, sun, of skin cancers. And as far as melanoma goes, which is responsible for 4% of skin cancers, the research is, seems to be unclear, although I did find a study when you combine long-term skin exposure to the sun with the sunscreen on top of that, there's an increased risk of melanoma. So using sunscreens for long periods of time is not necessarily the safest thing to do. Your best bet for protection is clothing, shade, and staying out of the sun for long periods of time. Um, now, one of the kind of the uh, popular sunscreens this year are these nano-sized sunscreens. And what they did is they took zinc oxide, which seems to be safe in its conventional form, and titanium dioxide, another sun block that seems to be safe, although there's research that shows it might not be. But they took those, and because they left a white residue, they nano-sized and made them super, super small so you don't see the white residue. Well, now the research is what is questionable whether it actually penetrates the skin or doesn't. Hard to believe it doesn't. I found studies that says it does. In fact, not only does it penetrate the phospholipid layer of your skin, but goes right to the nucleus and can be very toxic. Other studies say it doesn't penetrate. UCLA researchers say that the research is unclear and to better to be safe and sorry to avoid those nano size. And most companies are very happy to say they have nano size particles and please be aware not to use them. I also found a very interesting study that found if you take lots and lots of vitamin A prior to your sun exposure, like 50,000 international units, you actually have uh, a natural skin protection or sun protection just from the natural vitamin A. Now, I don't believe in taking that much vitamin A in a pill, but you can sure easily do that in your food. I mean, uh, spirulina has lots of beta carotene. Uh, sweet potatoes and carrots and wheatgrass and leafy greens are loaded with natural beta carotenes that convert to vitamin A and can give you some interesting and natural protection. So maybe this summer start getting more of those leafy greens and, and some of those high beta carotene uh, foods that can maybe give you some extra protection. You know, in Ayurvedic medicine, they didn't use sunscreens or sunblocks. They used uh, natural butters and they would cook herbs into them like avocado butter and shea butter and mango butter and cook special herbs and make these agents to put on the skin to make the skin function better as an organ. And uh, we created something like that many years ago called body butter. It has a low SPF factor, and research has shown that any SPF that's over 15 has no better benefit than SPF factors under 15. So the trend is definitely lower SPF, SPF factor sunscreens, but use and apply them more frequently as opposed to leaving them on all day. Most of the sunscreens have have um, toxic chemicals. When you put them onto your skin and then heat them up with the sun, they become extremely damaging. Now in the article associated with this video, I do list all the ingredients to avoid and all the safe ingredients that you can look for this summer for a sunscreen. So please go to the article, read more about our body butters and natural support for the skin. And thanks for listening. I'm Dr. John Duyard.